Hey YouTube, today I'm gonna to go over how to save data into a database using a Discord bot. So today we're gonna to go over how to persist data with Discord bots. Bots have no way of storing data on their own and data must be stored in some kind of external system. So for our example today, we're gonna to be using AWS and specifically DynamoDB to store the data we collect from a new command. I'll be demonstrating how to set up DynamoDB and set up the bot to send data to a DynamoDB table. So here's the concept for the apply command we're gonna to build today. The new command will be a pretend application for a job. We will be using a series of collectors to ask the user a few basic questions and store the response into an object in memory. And once all that data has been collected, we're gonna send the answers into DynamoDB. All right, let's get to it. So we're going to use a very similar technique we used to build our survey bot. Uh, you can watch that video in the description below, uh, but most of the code is gonna be very similar to that. Let's go ahead under our commands directory, let's create a new file, and we're going to name that apply.js. And this command is gonna be set up exactly how the other ones were, so module.exports equals open curly bracket. We're gonna set the prefix to apply. And the function is going to accept a message, msg. And let's create a new empty object called application, which is going to store the information about our applicant. Create a default filter, which we're gonna use for all of our collectors below. We're also going to accept message. And the only thing we wanna check for here is to make sure the author is not a bot. And set some default options for our collectors. And a max of one message per collector and our timeout will set to 15 seconds. The reason I'm defining the filter and the options before we start creating the collectors is because every single collector is going to use those same two objects. Because the code for this command is very similar to what we've done previously in this series, I'm actually just going to copy and paste it directly into VS Code and step through it line by line. So since because we're building an application and we want the information for our user to be private, you'll notice the first thing that looks different is instead of using message.channel.send, we're gonna use message.member.send so this way a DM is sent to the person and their information can be kept private. So stepping through this code, let's see exactly what it does. So the first thing we're gonna do is once a person uses the exclamation point apply command, they're gonna receive a message in their DMs that says thank you for interest in this position. First, what is your name? Because sending a message returns a promise, we can chain a then statement on the end which takes the DM and passes it into an arrow function. And we're going to use channel.await messages to create our collector using the filter and options that we had set above. And the remainder of the promise chain is just a series of sending messages and then waiting for a response. Uh, you could see whenever we collect anything from our collector, we're gonna take, uh, for instance, the application.name and we're going to set that particular field to the content that was passed back into the collected message. So then we're gonna ask the user, what is your email address, then wait for messages, store the email address into an email address field, and then finally tell us why you'd be a good fit. And then we're going to store that in what we're calling the pitch of the application. And just to start off with, we're gonna console.log out the application object for this. So let's go ahead and save this. So now that we've saved our code, let's go ahead and open up the terminal and issue npm run start. Confirmed our bot is running and logged in. Let's head back over to Discord. So let's go ahead and issue the command apply. You can see we received a DM from our bot. What is your first name? Brian Morrison. What is your email address? Brian at brianmorrison.me. And why would it be a good fit? Because I love to code. Okay, so we finished off our three questions that we specified in the code. So we can see back in VS Code inside of our terminal, we've logged out that object so you can see how the information is set in the object. So this confirms that our bot is logging the information we want properly. Let's head into AWS and start setting that up so we can save our data into DynamoDB. The first thing we need to do is create a DynamoDB table to store our data. You can access the DynamoDB service by dropping down the services tab up here and under databases, click on DynamoDB. If this is your first time accessing the DynamoDB service, you'll be prompted with a screen like this with the big create table button in the center. Let's go ahead and click that. And let's give our table a name. I'm going to choose demo discord bot. 
And for our primary key, I'm gonna choose ID. Primary key is the unique identifier we're gonna to need to save along with our application. For consistency, I'm also going to add a tag to our table. Uh, we're going to call the key application. And the value is going to be demo discord bot. This will just help keep things organized within the AWS environment. Click create. And our table is created. The next thing we need to do is create a service account that will allow our bot to hook into DynamoDB to save the data. So let's go ahead into services and under security, identity, and compliance, the first link here is IAM, which stands for identity and access management. Let's go ahead and click on that. On the left-hand side, you will see a link for users. Let's click that and add a user. I'm going to name my user Discord Bot SVC ACCT. Shorthand for service account. I'm going to check programmatic access and click on next for permissions. Now, best practice within AWS is to create a group for users and assign policies through the groups. And so the best practice in AWS is to create a group and assign security policies through groups. Because this is a service account and we're only going to be using it to access DynamoDB, we're going to create a policy and attach to the user directly. So go ahead and click on attach existing policies directly and then create policy. Under service, let's click choose a service and we can search for Dynamo, select DynamoDB. Under actions, we're gonna go ahead and check the box that says all actions, which is gonna give our bot access to everything. However, under resources, when we select this, you'll notice we can select a specific resource to allow this policy access to. So let's go ahead and click add ARN. Under region, we can check any. Table name is going to be demo discord bot. And backups can be any. I'm gonna to need to do this for each one of these items here. Okay, once you're finished, your screen should look something similar to mine, albeit the account number will likely be different. Let's go ahead and click on review policy. And let's go ahead and give our policy a name. As a quick tip, what I usually like to do is if I'm creating any kind of custom security policies, I will start with an underscore because that will bump that policy up to the top of the list. So we're gonna name our policy demo discord bot policy and go ahead and click create policy. Okay, we can close this tab now to go back to our create a user wizard. Let's go ahead and refresh the policies since we just created one. Select our demo Discord bot policy and click next to go to tags. Let's add the same tag that we added for our DynamoDB table here. Application is equal to demo Discord bot. Click next for review. And finally create user. Now we're gonna to need to grab the access key ID and the secret access key. Two things worth noting is these should be treated like passwords because anyone who has the key ID and secret will be able to access your AWS resources. The other thing worth noting is these values will only be shown on this screen. You will not be able to retrieve them again, so it's worth saving them down. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these into a new file in VS Code. We're gonna use them and add them into our environment variables later. Okay, let's go ahead and close this. And we're going to continue in VS Code. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is open up our terminal and issue the command npm install AWS SDK. Okay, once that's done, we can close our terminal. So now we're going to add our AWS access key and secret into our environment variables. So let's go ahead and copy our key ID, open our .env file. Let's add a new line in here. And we're going to add AWS underscore access underscore key, underscore ID, paste that in there. Let's grab our secret access key, AWS underscore secret, underscore access, underscore key. And the last thing we need to add is a region. So AWS underscore default, underscore region equals US East one which is the default AWS region. Let's go ahead and save our environment variables. Close this file, and we can close this and discard the changes.
Now let's go to the top of our apply.js file, add a couple of lines so we have some space to work. And the first thing we need to do is require .env, so our environment variables are pulled in, so require .env config. Now we need to import our AWS library, so const AWS equals require AWS SDK. And now we need to update our connection details into AWS using our environment variables that we just specified. You can do this by issuing aws.config.update and then pass in a region of process.env.aws underscore default underscore region. And our access key ID is equal to process.env.aws underscore access underscore key underscore id and finally our secret access key which is process.env.aws underscore secret access key and now right at the top of the file we're going to instantiate our document client which is used to connect into dynamodb to save the data so const doc client equals new document client Save the file. And now we can start adding our code to actually save the data into our table. So let's get rid of our console.log. And we're going to create a new const of params, which is going to hold our parameters that we're going to use to save the data. Open curly bracket. We have to specify the table name, which we previously set to demo discord bot. We have to specify the item we're going to save. We need to specify the primary key of ID, and it needs to be unique. So for a shorthand way of getting a unique value, I'm going to use date.now.toString, which will generate a random number that we can use as an ID. And then finally, we're gonna set the info for this item to our application, since it stores all the data that we want to save. Now let's issue the put command to our document client. So doc client.put. Pass in our params here. I'm going to create an error function to catch any errors. So if there are no errors, then we're going to send a message back to the user. Return msg.member.send. And we put in here, we've successfully received your application. We'll be in touch. And else, if there is an error, we're going to throw unable to save record. And then we're going to add in the error message itself. Okay, save our file. Let's open terminal, npm start to start our bot. Let's go ahead and go back to Discord, issue the command apply. Okay, we received our direct message. Enter our name again. What is your email address? Brian at brianmorrison.me. And our pitch. Great, we've successfully received your application. We'll be in touch. Let's head back over into AWS. Under services, let's go back to DynamoDB. Head to our tables, select demo discord bot, and let's go to items. And if we expand this out, we can see this is the record for the application we just saved into our table. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share the video. I'm also live right here on YouTube every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. For channel updates or to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev or join my Discord using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.